Hello guys, it is How to Tech here, and today I'm going to show you how to use and set up D3D gear. <laughs> So what is D3D Gear? It's basically a recording software, like it says here on the website. It says game recording software, game live streaming software, measure game frame rate, and game screenshot capture. So you can download the trial, which is free for 15 days, or you can buy, which is $34.95, and uh, that's 26.30 in British Pound right now. So assuming you already have downloaded it, this is what it looks like. You just want to double click and open it, and press yes. Some of my settings may already be set in, and sometimes it crashes for me, but I think that's more of a problem with my computer than it is with the software. So in general, there is nothing really to look at. It says version information, and then it says registration information, and then it says, like, you know, this is a release copy of D3D gear. Thanks for purchasing D3D gear. Then it says enable push to talk. So. What that is, is you don't need to enable it, but if you're recording in movie modes, which is basically just recording, you have to press a button and hold it down to actually, like, you know, for people to hear you through your microphone. So I have um, I have not, not enabled, so I can just talk all the time like I am right now without pressing any buttons, which is really cool. But, if you want that, you know, you can. Then there's another text box that's run D3D gear when Windows starts and then enable recording on your desktop and then require reboot. So the first one is pretty explanatory, it just opens whenever you launch Windows. And the second one is that you can record your desktop, not just games. Okay, so now we're going to FPS overlay. You don't have to take it, but you probably should. It's to show you FPS in games. And you can press a key to disable it or enable it. And you press clear and you click it and then you can press another button to make it, you know, change. So yeah. Then FPS position is predefined locations. It shows you like the little crosshairs where you can put the FPS. You can put it anywhere there. Or if you do anywhere on the screen you can put it absolutely anywhere. You can drag it in that little place there, 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 anywhere. So then if it says no, now it says FPS font colour. And what you want to do is click on that, then you can choose what colour you want the font to be, like in... Perhaps it's like that orangish colour, I think. Maybe it's yellow. I don't know. I'll put it as like yellow. And that's the colour it will be up in the top corner when I'm playing your ge when you're playing your game. Then FPS font size. You can make it really big, which is really noticeable in the top corner, or you can make it really small, which is sort of hard to see. So I'm just going to put it like there. Then FPS measure interval, which is how you make... How many, how, uh, how many times it refreshes in one second so it refreshes every 500 milliseconds which is the lowest i recommend doing that it just means that it gives you an accurate gameplay like fps it doesn't wait around now if you want to screenshot you don't have to have this enabled and most of the time don't but you can now it says save screenshots to this folder and it automatically saves in your pictures folder but you can change that by selecting change and then selecting where you want it to save to then the hotkey for taking the screenshot is F7 defaultly, you know you can change that. Then screenshot format. <coughs> screenshot format, I recommend doing PNG because it's usually the highest quality. Then you can untick this because unless you want to see the frame rate in the top corner or even if you have it enabled. So I usually untick that if I was going to take a screenshot. Then I add timestamp to screenshot. Scre wow add timestamp to screenshot i usually don't take that it adds the time that you took the screenshot to the bottom corner then display screenshot capture notification it is like when you press the button it tells you it took the screenshot then there's another one that says continue to take screenshot until hockey or late. so you can hold down your screenshot button i'll take hundreds now in record movie you probably really want to use this for this because you know it's pretty good recording software it's very lightweight it doesn't like make your computer lag at all I'll just press default so it goes back to the default so the first one says save moves to this folder and you can press change and select where I just like to do my desktop then hotkey for movie recording I usually put it as F9 because you know that's a pretty 
continuing key for me to place. Down here it says video recording settings. Now you can pick a resolution from 640 by 360, which is 360p, all the way up to 2560 by 1920, which is just higher than 4K, but you know, no, it's just higher than 1440p. It cannot do 4K, I'm pretty sure, unless that is 4K. I don't know, I don't really know that stuff. <coughs> But since I have a 1080p monitor, I usually do 1920 by 1080 Then in frame rate, you can click the button, and if it doesn't say 60 for you, which I think it might not, you just need to select that and type in what FPS you want to do. So I usually do 60 because I record at 60 FPS, and you know, eh, it's pretty good FPS, nice and smooth. Then in format, I would just leave it as AVI 2 open DML, because that's, you know, the default, you don't really need to mess with it, it's pretty good. Then in video Kodak. If you have an Intel CPU or you're using integrated integrated graphics, I highly recommend using Intel hardware or fast MPEG-4 version 2 codec. If you have an AMD graphics card or a CPU, I recommend going AMD hardware. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, I recommend going NVIDIA hardware. Hopefully you get that. If you don't, just leave it as normal. It should be fine. I'm going to go NVIDIA because I have an NVIDIA graphics card and it's quick. Uh, in quality, this depends on how good your computer is, the lower like quality you do it, the faster it will be when you're recording, and the higher quality, the less, like, the more impact it will have on your FPS, which is still nothing, basically. So I'm going to do best, then in threads, I recommend leaving on auto, unless you want to put more, like, power into the recording, if it's, like, lagging, even though your game isn't lagging, I recommend putting more into it. Okay, now in video, or audio codec even, or it's, it's yeah, audio codec. I recommend leaving it in MP3 because it's usually pretty good. Then main sound is just like your Windows sound, so you might not want to have that tech, or you might just want to leave it. Then microphone, I usually put that on because when I record videos, you know, I talk. Yeah. Then you can select which one, which is my Razer Kraken mic. And then what I usually do is with my main sound, I put it a half of what I use for my actual recording sound, so you can actually hear me more than the actual sound of the game I'm playing or whatever. Then I would recommend maybe doing that because then it shows like your main game volume in one bar and your microphone in another bar so you can select and like, change each one individually. So I do recommend doing that. Now the convert surround channel to stereo and you can do it but I recommend not, it's better if you don't. Then capture mouse or cursor movement, so you can do that if you don't want to see your mouse on the screen, like you can see mine. If that's not there you don't want to do that, you know, go ahead. Then add frame rate number, it just shows your FPS in the top corner. Okay, now I'm not going to go into broadcast, media overlays or benchmarks because my software has a thing where it crashes like that. So I don't know what's on my memento is outdated or something, I don't know. But yeah, that will do it for this video. I hope you liked it, hit the like button if you did. And yeah, I hope I see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.